Welcome in everybody to the winner's circle where we relive the iconic moments of the 2023 disc golf season with the people that made those moments happen. And today we have none other than Cat Merch. Cat, you had a couple big wins this season, but this week we are going to zoom in on your fantastic win, emotional win at Jonesboro. Uh, before we zoom into that round, I want to ask you, where are you right now? How's your off season going? How are you in general? Um, I'm, I'm good. I'm in Arkansas at my mom's house where I usually am. The off season's going good. I've been, I think today will be day seven of doing the ice bath. So I've been doing the ice bath and that's been fun, but, uh, I've been chilling like a villain. Talk to me about the ice bath real quick. I, a lot of players are starting to do that. What exactly is that doing for you as a, as an athlete? Well, for me, it's making me more comfortable with colder temperatures. I seem to uh, I seem to slack when it gets cold, so I want to become more adaptive to the cold. And also, it I think it increases dopamine in the brain, so if I can get some of that, I'm going to get a lot of that. It increases your sleep. It uh, helps with recovery. I've been working out, too, so it's been it's been really good for my body. Yesterday, I did it, and... It was the easiest ice bath that I've done, but I think today would be different because there was actual a sheet of ice over there, over the little tub, the little plunge. I'm going to bring it with me on tour. You're going to have to get on it. I, I will. I will absolutely give it a shot. I have not tried it yet, but I know you, alongside many other players, I mean, Kristen Tatar, Ricky Wysocki, so many other people are getting into that. But before we dive too far into ice bath uh, science, let's talk about the season in general. You came into 2023 primed and ready to take control of your life as an athlete and as a person. There were so many personal uh, growth moments and, you know, growth moments as an athlete. Talk about how you felt coming into this season. This season, the 2023 season, I yes. felt like doo-doo, to be honest. Complete doo-doo, because I'd broken up with Nico, and um, I don't know if you knew this, but I missed the cut at Vegas first tournament of the year 21st birthday so that didn't feel good I, I really didn't feel that good but I knew that no matter what I had to keep going on so I guess I had a lot of resilience uh, coming into this season it seems like you really dug deep as the season went on and you got to return back to your home state after an incredible performance at Champions Cup uh, you were in the hunt for pretty much the entire tournament and then you come back to Arkansas, primed and ready. How did you feel rolling back into your home state to play the Jonesboro Open? Tired. <laughs> exhausted. I remember sleeping the most of that week and looking for agates. But I was focused because uh, before that, it was Champions Cup. And I remember taking mm -hmm. uh, a Silver Series off and going to the Champions Cup to, like, really hone in on my skills. So I guess in a way I felt prepared. Definitely felt good, but I was tired. Well, you played a couple solid rounds. You go into the final day looking for the win. Let's actually jump into the action uh, at Jonesboro. How do you feel about the course in general uh, whenever you come back here? I like it. I think it's a pretty good course. You know, back in the day when I first started touring, the girls were like, this is the harder course of the tour. And I, you know, I can't help but chuckle because now it seems like it's become the easier one of the easier ones you told me during the press conference I, I almost spit out my water uh, listening to some of the answers you gave me you dressed up as Macho Man Randy Savage but then you told me something real and you said I'm going to ride this confidence until I die and as much as that's kind of a funny way to deliver it I understand what you're saying um, what were you trying to bring into this final day were you consciously telling yourself to bring confidence I was trying to actually be confident and stay calm. Um, the night mm -hmm. before, I went to dinner with Sarah Holcomb and Perks, and I remember looking at her and going, dude, I'm terrified. And she's like, this is your time. You've got this. And I was like, mm -hmm. maybe. And she said, just do what you do. Go in there. And I went in there. I feel like maybe is a great answer. It's honest. It's objective. Like, you're not really predicting the future. Uh, I I actually think it's kind of an underrated answer to something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. How I'm are you? Scared. How are you? <laughs> Being scared is okay. I think that means you care about it. I want to ask you, Arya Castorita, have you ever played with her before? She was so young on the lead card of a of a pro tour event. Were you impressed by her uh, her play? It's nothing new to me. That kid's been playing for a very long time, and she's been around. She, she's honest. She, when she gets out on tour, like fully on tour, she's going to be one of the top contenders. She's got game. She's got the good mental fortitude that you need. But the most important thing about her that I really like is she's very emotionally in tune and calm. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of surprising to see for, for the younger ones because I know I wasn't like that when I was her age, and I wish I was. But, yeah, she's yeah. got skill. She's going to be real, real good. Yeah, this is a really interesting lead card. I mean, it's you, and Aria Castorita, Missy Gannon, who's just been on a tear the past couple of years, and Haley, who, when she brings the A game, is one of the best players in the world, you know, right alongside you. How did you feel, you know, going up against, you know, those two, but then Haley, someone you've played a lot of disc golf with in the past? I honestly didn't care. I just mm -hmm. tried to really stay calm. I didn't I didn't think about the other competitors. I just knew that I needed to try my very best if I was to pull this off. Um it was a fun round. <laughs> are there are there numbers you're thinking about? Like right now, are you thinking I need to shoot 6 down, I need to shoot 7 down? I know people no. think, you know, kind of a couple different things there. No, um I just thought I need to do what I need to do and hopefully it would be enough. I, I can't mm -hmm. think about numbers when I play because I'll just start spinning. It just drives yeah. my anxiety through the roof and I can't play good golf when I'm having a panic attack. <laughs> That's understandable. Missy I remember jams the day up. before they Go asked ahead. me because I saw Missy Missy walking down and doing the the interview on the round and they asked me to do that and I thought about doing it at first but I was like no dude I'll be a jitterbug the whole time <laughs> it's honest I don't think I would have won if I if I did it to be honest I'm superstitious I feel like that's kind of a, a pretty typical thing in disc golf I think because you spend so much time in your head kind of thinking about these things it's kind of easy to develop those uh superstitions hole two a lot of players going down this right side with a stock hyzer is there any benefit to go left side on on that hole i don't know i've never went left side i've always done the hyzer it's just because it's my stronger suit but i bet yeah. if you i don't know man this seems like a really long tunnel but i don't know i just don't know i don't well, have an answer you push yourself off to this this right side. Do you do you worry about any of the bunkers out here at Jonesboro? I mean, it, it seems like rough wise, it's one of the easier courses in that regard. Yeah, I don't worry too much unless I'm just shanking it all over the place. I pulled mm -hmm. that one unfortunately, but I threw it so bad that it was good, so it worked out. Oh, did you get through the backside on that one? Um, I threw it past it. <laughs> <laughs> the, it, it was a better shank than it than it, uh, it could have been yes talk to me about the the relationship you have with your caddy I, I remember uh you told me he was local and he was a pretty solid i believe masters player you were telling me uh how did that come Lacey? to be did you reach out to him no oh, man lisey's just there man he wanted to come caddy for me and i was like let's do it the dream team I've known him since I started playing disc golf, so it was real. It was a real, real special, special thing for him to be there. And oh man, I clipped the tree. I'm mad about that. He's a good dude, though. He's always been good. Decent shot there from Haley. It feels like the wind picked up a little bit. It felt like earlier in the week. We had like the best conditions that you could possibly have at Jonesboro, like almost calm, which was bizarre. Yep. And then today you yeah. actually have to play real Jonesboro. Yeah. I don't know. The weather gets weird up in Jonesboro. 
the way the the way the air moves through the state, Jonesboro kind of has the wind just all gets pushed up in there, and I think it's because mm-hmm. it goes towards Memphis, and it it's like getting attracted to that big river, you know, when you cross mm-hmm. over into Memphis. Yeah, I think that has something to do with it. Nice. Yeah, I mean, when there's no wind out here, as much as it's a challenging course, it's kind of off to the races. Oh, yeah. And there's, you know, there's pressures added to that. But at the same time, with the lack of artificial OB, it feels like the wind needs to be there to create that tension. Yeah. And you're hanging in there right now, you know, tied for first place going into hole three. Something I have to ask is your distance is super underrated, and maybe it's not underrated anymore. Do you ever consciously work on throwing harder, throwing faster, throwing farther? No. I just focus on throwing it straight <laughs> and hit the line. Yeah. Um, I've always had distance. Even, even when I didn't have a backhand, when my first backhand wasn't bad, it's, I'm mm-hmm. just genetically strong. I'm built to throw far. What was your athletic background before you got into disc golf or maybe when you were growing up through school? Did you play any organized sports? Yeah, I tried to play basketball. Um, I played softball. Oh, uh, What else did I do? I tried to play volleyball. That didn't work. The, the thing that I was good at was track because I that's just running. I was quick, but... Um, it was very hard to like grow up and be in the sports in my town because it's very mm. small, it's very clicky, and my last name is Merch, so I don't have a good. It's not that I don't have a good reputation, but my brothers unfortunately tarnished our last name. So anything that I had to do with sports, um, I always kind of got like held back. It was weird. But I tried to like play sm- sports. Like small town politics kind of thing. Dude, it's it's so bad. It's a real thing, too. I tried to join the col- golf team one time. Cause, uh, I liked golf. And the coach straight up told me no. And it's like no one was really good that was on the team. It was like Rosebud Golf Team. But it, the reason he told me no is because my older brother, Taylor, beat him up in high school. Oh, no. Beat the golf coach. I'm telling you, dude. That, that's Craig, a little petty. So petty. He's the reason I quit basketball, too. Not Taylor, but that coach. And then, you know, I had disc golf, so I just went all in on disc golf, and now he sells houses, so. Well, here you are, final round, lead card, pro tour event, living (laughs) out your dream. Not too shabby of a trade-off there. Not too bad. What about, did you do any sports besides disc golf? Me? You know, funny you said volleyball was the sport that you didn't play uh, or didn't play well or whatever, that was like my main sport that I played. In Chicagoland, that is like a big men's sport is volleyball. Some places in the country have never even heard of it, um, but I played year-round. I played beach volleyball in the summertime at Lake Michigan. I played club volleyball in the winter time, um, and that was pretty much all I did. I played, I played golf, you know, freshman year in high school. I, I liked golf, but not that much. Um, yeah. but for me, it was disc golf. I played four years of ultimate in college and I don't know, it's, it's, it's always been Frisbee for me. That's always been the thing that I've loved. And I think I, I resonate with you, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, playing disc golf. And did, did you have a lot of kids around you that played disc golf? Yeah. Or were you the only <laughs> one? Um, we had Edie Hurd when earlier on, but, um, like in Rosebud, no. No, I was always really by myself. Went and played with my brother and stuff, but there was a girl who was close to my age who used to play. She was real good, too, man. She was so good. Like, like good, good. It was, like, good, good. The name Did Edie you get- heard. Yeah, 
because she was good. Did you get to play against her in juniors tournaments? Like, how, how competitive in disc golf were you in your younger years? I, I, I haven't I, polished up on it, my PDGA stats in a while. I was pretty competitive. Um, I didn't have a lot of competition, though. Edie was my competition, and then she kind of slowed down, and I didn't really have anyone besides men in the state of Arkansas. What kept you motivated to keep going forward? I mean, I, as a kid, I got frustrated not having juniors players to play against, really, and I, I made me move up early, but what, what about you? What kept you going? I had a lot of pain, and I had nothing mm. else but disc golf. So I really latched onto it, and I just stuck with it because it's all that mm -hmm. I, it's all mm -hmm. I got. You know, I don't, I don't have anything but this. I don't have a college degree. I, I, you know, I'm a disc golfer. I'm a competitor, mm -hmm. and that's all I'm ever gonna be. Well, I, I do have to say, you gave us a real tearjerker when you kind of shared a little bit more of your story on that Jomez profile. Um, and coincidentally, of course, it's this week that you, you know, play so well, you also get to share your story. What was the, um, aftermath of, of sharing that story on Jomez? Um, how many messages were you getting from people? Did you have any heartfelt conversations with anybody? I had a lot of people that sent me messages and said, thank you for, mm -hmm. for being open and they were sharing their stories and their experiences and uh, it really meant a lot to me that I was able to touch these people in, in such a way like I, I really didn't expect that but mm -hmm. it made people feel good so it made me feel good make people feel good you know it's interesting I feel like disc golf is an escape for a lot of people. I mean, I think you tap into any local disc golf community, there's probably some similar stories. Uh, people that don't have too many other places to go but the course, but then they find their solace and they find their family at the course. So I, uh, I definitely resonated with what you said as well. So I thought it was awesome to see you playing so well at this stage in the tournament. Bam! There it is. What's gonna do about Hope. it? What's gonna do about it? It's in the bucket. Count it. Count it up. Just outside C one. Oh man. That was hearted. It had nowhere else to go but in. At this point in the Almost round, are you starting to get? Are you starting to get fired up at this point in the round? You know, you hit that big putt. Are you starting to feel like, hey, I'm going to win this tournament? Like, or are you just trying to stay centered? I was trying to stay centered. I have, I have to keep my energy down. Mm -hmm. I have to keep it down. I have to keep it constant and forward. Mm -hmm. I get too excited and start throwing it sideways. You know, I, I've noticed, especially over the course of, of this year, whenever you talk to me, I can tell that you're like, continuously like learning lessons and like reflecting on your you know actions and reflecting on your play it feels like like uh psychologically you've come a long way as an athlete do you feel like you'd agree with that this year i do but i i feel like i have even farther to go i'm forever mm -hmm. i'm never gonna really stop learning i'm forever a student but mm -hmm. i feel like this year i made some good strides i just need to be more disciplined now mm -hmm. And when that happens, look out. You got some time. You still have quite a bit of I time. Know. I think you're on the right track. Aria is smooth. Great. She is She is so smooth. Yeah. I think she's been playing since she was little. Like little, little. Yeah, the whole family. The whole family has been playing. Her sisters. Melody. Yeah. Melody beat me in Junior Worlds the second time I went, and she was on it. <laughs> little love from James. James is the man. What kind of caddy is he? Is, is he telling you advice without you asking? Is he kind of like game planning with you along the way, or is he waiting for you to talk to him? Um, He's keeping me calm, and... 
if I ask him about something, he'll answer it. But if he thinks he needs to put input in, he, he will absolutely do that, and I'll take it into consideration. Get up. Oh. When something like that happens, you know, Missy gets slammed down OB. Are you thinking like, oh, yes, like as much as you want to cheer for your, your competitors, are you kind of feeling like, okay, I got a leg up on her. I have a shot to take a stroke. Are you thinking about that at all at this point? No, I don't really like to think that way about my competitors. I like to think that they're mm -hmm. going to make the shot the best shot. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's kind of a surprise when I see people mis get mistakes. Mm-hmm. Is that a premium plastic putter that she's putting with? It is. She's putting with a pure. Are there any other players that you can think of on the tour that are doing something like that? Uh, That's unique. No, not on tour. I know that Rebecca Minnick, she was putting with some premium plastic putters, but I don't know if she is now. And Katie Belty was putting with Atlases, but she doesn't putt with them now. Oh, mid-ranges. Yeah. Cool. If anyone no. can put an at Katie Belty, it's insane to watch. She just <laughs> she throws it right in there like it's nothing. I love watching people putt with mid-ranges. I think it's cool. I think it's a sweet idea. It is. How'd you feel about this one? Oh, dude, I was stoked. Wait, hold on. Oh, I thought it was going to be good. Never mind, I hated it. I mean, you popped out, right? <laughs> you, that could have been way, way worse. Oh, no, I got some luck. Luck is a part of the game. A lot. <laughs> There's a lot of luck involved with this game. So many weird things can happen to a disc. No, dude, it's weird. You have to that surrender a, a lot. Yeah. I hate doing that. <laughs> Surrendering? Yeah, it's no fun. Who wants to watch a layup for par? When nobody Ooh. wants to watch a comeback for bogey. I, I, I think your your brain wants to see it, but your heart really doesn't want to see it. It's definitely a battle. Which wolf are you going to feed today? <laughs> what did you feel like you were doing this round? Were you feeling like you were playing pretty conservative, or were you taking more chances? You know, I was trying to score. It just wasn't working mm -hmm. out for me that way at first. I don't really know. I forgot what I shot this round, but I remember thinking, dude, you could have, like, made those putts and made those shots. Yeah, I mean, Arya's playing well. Haley just hit a huge putt. She's been putting well all day. Uh, we, we weren't sure. I mean, everyone on the commentary, on the ground, no one knew whose tournament it was. Missy blowing tough. a chance at birdie. Yeah. It's tough. You got that wind coming through the corridor. This hole always feels good to get a birdie on, though. Definitely. Oh, we're heading up to hole eight. I've asked you many times about this, but I, I still I still think your lefty backhand that you tried throwing on hole eight was one of my favorite moments of the entire season. It, it just felt so confident. <laughs> I just was like, wow, okay. She's doing this right now. <laughs> and, it was, yeah. and it was not good. And it, was, it just did not play out. No. But it could have. It, it definitely could have. God. Could've Man. Definitely sa said the same thing about Haley's flick that just rolled outside C1. You're 40, 45 feet now. Yeah. You know. Oh, man. There's some holes through that tree. Maybe it's gotten bigger, but there's definitely holes through the tree. I don't know what it is about my sidearm, dude. Like, I think it's all mental. I really do. Because I, when I started mm -hmm. playing, I used to be predominantly sidearm. And then I switched to Prodigy. 
and then then in the switch of mm -hmm. prodigy i ripped a muscle in my rotator cuff and i haven't really Whoa. had a powerful sidearm but that's changing you feel like the sidearm's coming along I think it's coming along. I've got this bull whip that uh, my buddy Ryan Hauser sent me that's been strengthening my elbow joint. Oh, great. It's making me stronger. And it's real fun. I'm going to bring it on tour. <laughs> I think I saw you I think I saw you post a video of you using the bull whip. I think that's a, a fantastic idea to like build strength in the elbow and all those different muscles. Do you feel just like a like a lunatic using it or or is it just a just a blast i feel like an animal <laughs> you know i feel real good when i get it to crack when i get it that crack. oh dude there's nothing like it although well, i'm looking forward to like seeing I, it it's gonna happen i feel like i am disturbing the energy of the land though um there's a lot of history on my land there's actually like a civil war little headstone like a general's headstone walking distance oh, wow. from my house and there's a bunch of unmarked graves um by the house we there's a lot of crazy stuff but there's also this, this one house up the road that used to be an old plantation house and the land that i live on used to be uh, slave land like cotton fields so um i feel like when i crack the whip the energy is not good. Whoa. Yeah, you might want to step off the land first. That sounds uh I understand what you're saying. Yeah. We don't have to go yeah. any farther. Well, I live in that. the south, dude. Like I yeah. live in the bad south. I understand. Well you know fingers I mean? crossed crazy. fingers crossed you don't absorb any of the bad energy and the the rotator cuff is strong this year. Are are you sticking with kind of hyzer flip forehands or are you throwing more chop style? What what, what does that look like for you now? I don't know. Or, <laughs> I wish I had a clear answer yeah. for you, but they're going far, and I'm throwing them hard. That's <laughs> that's all. That's all you need to do, really. That's pretty much height. all you can do. I thought that was yeah, great shot. I mean, you you get a roll forward, and there's a pretty solid look. I mean, what, 45 feet now? Yep. This is it's an eagle wolf part five for sure. Mm -hmm. You just got to get off that tee pretty good. Solid flick. Yeah, I mean at this point, everyone's kind of firing away at this point. Arya yeah. is still tied for first through the front nine. I kind of thought she was gonna win it. I was like, this girl's playing real good with, with how the whole season has been going at this point i was not surprised i was like okay we'll just see another winner and then next week there will be a 12 year old that comes out <laughs> that no one's heard of and win <laughs> that one yeah so much talent these days when you were Look a kid coming up move. that was big brain very large yeah. brain move was there an ounce of temptation to run it absolutely that's why i just stepped up and did it Nice work. Don't think, just do. When you were a kid coming up, you know, getting better at the game and practicing and learning the technique, were you studying videos of players? Were you were you watching coverage at all, or were you just getting out there? I was, uh, I was getting out there, but I was really fixated on any coverage that I could watch. Mm -hmm. What happened? What? That... That was a weird wind bounce, it felt like. You had a crosswind that just shoved you into the ground. That was all me. No worries. <laughs> no, yeah, there's no flattered. there's no wind here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, my God. I got lucky and it rolled out, but geez. Oh, that's so good. Oh. Wow. Oh! Oh! <laughs> That's I forgot really, about really good. this one. Jesus Christ, cat! What are you doing? A little short. A little soft on that. 
it's funny. Every time I talked to, to James, I walked up to him to get little bits of insight. I know I'm not going to obviously go up to you mid round, but he was just so cool, calm and collected. It felt like he wasn't even nervous. Like, it's like, all right, man. Yeah. James is pretty cool. Is that how he is when he plays too? Oh yeah. He's real funny. Real funny. Please make it. Yes. How much of this round do you not remember? <laughs> like, it sounds like you're surprised by some of these shots. I don't remember much. I don't remember much of any rounds, really. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? For Rizzle. Unless something cool or weird happens. Uh -huh. Or if it's bad. I remember the bad it's... rounds, but I don't remember the good ones. I think this was a good shot, though. Yeah. yeah, this was Look smacked. Get out of the bush. Yeah! <laughs> Look at that. That's actually that perfect. perfect for a sidearm. This hole yeah. feels like it should be so much easier than it actually is. It just seems so straightforward, and then you see so many people mess it up. Throw a hyzer yeah, down well, there. It's... Well, it's windy. You see the wind going. And then sometimes if you pull it off a little bit too much, you hit that tree. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess yes. And I think maybe the uphill off the tee makes it tougher. But, you know, this is just that stock hyzer forehand, you know. The tee pad definitely gives you some type of optical illusion. I remember as a lefty playing that one, I was so frustrated. I, I got to a point where I was just throwing a putter straight because I, I, my forehand was so low I couldn't throw it because I would hit the hill. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's a tricky little shot. It is. It's a good hold of birdie if you can. I mean, the wind is just beating up these shots, like, way more than I remember. Is this even going to go in? Oh, my God. What? <laughs> Why? It's so funny. <laughs> it feels like you're watching this round for the first time, and then I've talked to some I players am. who can talk to me about a C-tier they played seven years ago and <laughs> tell me shot for shot. I am not that guy. I'm the same way. <laughs> no clue. It's just, it's just better if I forget and work on. <laughs> I can continuously think that there's something I need to work on. Yeah, I think just I think you've told me before throughout the years, just keep showing up. Eventually, one of those weekends is going to be your weekend, and everything's going to come together. And right now, Aria is still in first place through 11 holes. Yep. At this point, everyone is starting to just like talk about her and dive into her story and. It felt like they almost were giving her the victory, but this course is tricky at the end. Yeah, well. This is nice. Look at that. Just another hole. It's tricky. This one's a good hole. Yeah. What are you throwing here? Yeah. You hear that crowd? They like you. Hear them. <laughs> That's got to feel good. Bubbles. Enough. You had a big year in many, house, many ways. You adopted a dog from the woods in Texas. How is Bubbles doing? She's a mess, <laughs> honestly. I, I've been kennel training her because she I let her out one night and she defecated over the whole carpet and that was not the best way to wake up. So now she's in kennel training. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, we got, we got this dog, instead of having a save the relationship baby, me and Nico got a dog, <laughs> and, yeah, it's a real thing. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. And it's been great. It's been good. 
And my cat absolutely loves bubbles. Mm -hmm. They fight, but it's real funny. That's okay. It's family. Oh, dude. Yeah, that was... Oh, my God. Nasty slow roll after going OB. And that was a good shot, too. Mm-hmm. Now you're safe. It had to be done, man. This is a tricky at green. At this point, have you broken character yet, or are you still feeling pretty present? H have you felt any of the tension of the moment? Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to, like, <laughs> push it aside. I was like, I need to, like, make up four strokes here. This is just... I don't know. So you knew. You knew how many strokes you had to make up. Yeah, but I don't think four was the right number. Mm -hmm. I think technically, I think, I think I was like one away, but I thought I needed to make four up. I don't know. Were you looking at scores at all? Like, do you check U disc mm -mm. whatsoever? I never, I never did when I played. Can't do it. It's bad. It's bad for my headspace. Mm hmm. This is another one of those holes that it seems like a stock hyzer, but it's so much more than that. You have to do something so specific. Especially when it's windy. Um, usually I throw a mid-range, but I think, yeah, I threw the Thunderbird on this hole because it was just that windy. The way the wind was coming over the hill, man. Just, I have a natural hyzer release, mm -hmm. so I think I can pinpoint my little hyzers pretty well when I'm practicing consistently. <laughs> it's just a little bit of geometry. No problem. Just a wee. And this is, I mean, right here, Aria's got a huge putt. You just took multiple strokes on her in the hole before. Clutch. No problem. It a death putt, too. But she's got the good side of the wind that that was a good putt to run. What winds do you prefer when you're putting with that kind of push putt hyzer style? Tail winds. Whatever wind How... is presented. Yeah, I guess you're right. Do you change anything when it's a headwind? I try to try to be more confident. Yeah, I try to keep it, it high. I, I mm -hmm. don't know, man. I try to keep the disc flat and spin it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Talk about this shot. I was scared and angry, but then it came out of it. And I was like, this is it. <laughs> Not good. And a layup here. I never. I mean, you were going the for the eagle. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, not really. If you have, you're just trying to clear. I'm going for the bird. Um, yeah, yeah, because I have the distance to clear, and um, if you clear it, it's almost an automatic birdie. Yeah. Dude, I bought a disc golf cart. Is it going to change your life? It's going to change everything. I got aerobic. Oh, you got one of those big old carts. Yeah, man. It had to be done. You could push bubbles in there now. You're all set. No. Bubbles can walk. I'll push Jim, though. That's right. Jim, Jim. Jim is a prince. He's so good, dude. He's so cool. But him and my other cat, well, it's not my cat, but I got this cat from my stepdad, Mike. He's from New Zealand. He's really cool. We got this ginger cat named Mike Tyson. And I got him when I had my last raccoon, Flick. So Tyson grew up with the raccoon. Now Tyson's a badass, and he beats up everybody, even Jim. I had to break up a cat fight this morning. 
Sorry, Hang on. Though. You had a pet raccoon named Flick? I've had four raccoons. What are are they are they even close to d domesticated? Like, what is it like raising a wild raccoon? It's like it's interesting. You have to have a lot of patience. <laughs> um, I don't know. They're like dog, fox, squirrel, rabbit, cat things. They're very they're very underrated. They have a super duper. They can hear better than a dog. Um, they don't have any saliva glands. That's why you find them down by creeks and stuff. Mm. And um, they're nocturnal when they reach sexual maturity. But uh, Flick, man, Flick was awesome. He was the best coon we've had. The first one we had was Rocky, and he was kind of he was the more feral. Of them all. <laughs> so, like, what is that like? Is he tearing up your whole house? He tears up the cabinets. Um, like, the sugar. He likes the sweet stuff. But they don't really tear anything up. You, but I do. I would say that if you are going to get a raccoon, if you're going to rehabilitate a raccoon, you might just, you need to get them when they're, like, young, young, like, bottle-fed, mm -hmm. so they're not too feral. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's how we got ours. Was bottle feeding it? Yeah. My little babies. Flick was <laughs> awesome. He got real big, though. And, um... You see, I, n I can't keep him because he's fully capable of living in the wild by himself. Mm -hmm. So, as soon as he reached sexual maturity, he said goodbye to me, and I haven't seen him since. Was it a sad day? It was. I didn't understand what he was doing until he was gone. It's okay. He'll come back. Maybe. Or he's already been eaten. Well, he was we'll a pretty just never know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. We'll never know. But you know what we will know is that going into 16, you and Haley were tied. Haley hits a 50-foot jumper in your face as you go for par how are you feeling going into the final stretch um well at the time i was like okay i didn't know that it was the way that it was i was like we're just playing mm. frisbee golf i still wanted to try and do my best but mm -hmm. you know it is what it is what's the strategy on this one i mean can you get aggressive at all on this opening tee shot I really don't think so. Um, I don't know. It's kind of a funny hole, but it's a good hole. Yeah, it's one of those FPO holes that I I always feel like leaves something to be desired. I wish you know they opened up a little bit more distance for y'all, but the spot you just put that drive in was perfect. Yeah, it was pretty primo. Pretty premium. I've and had so Haley many problems with this hole. Yeah, it's just so bizarre. The landing zone, it like almost doesn't exist. It's because everything is sloped, and then you get down to the bottom and you're rolling the dice. What are you thinking here? Don't throw it into the tree. And where does it go? Look where it's going. Right into the tree. <laughs> Safe. <Yeah. laughs> oh my god. And there's some lanes down there too. There's some opportunities to like hit a big putt too. Yeah. No. Oh, it's a shootout. And look at that wind. Look at the wind blowing. Which no, is not dude, favorable. It's weird. It's weird because I feel like Arkansas really don't even get that windy. It just gets windy when the disc golfers come in town. Yeah, of course. I think it's the collective energy we all bring. Just chaos. Just a whirlwind yeah, of, of chaos. Now, in your head, are you thinking, like, of course Haley's going to bury this, and I have to make mine? Yes. It's a good effort. Yes. So you didn't know you guys were tied? Out. No, absolutely not. I was just trying to go. Trying to do my thing.
it's a tough spot to be. It feels like sometimes when you're playing well, you wake up and you start to kind of realize the weight of the moment. But it seems like you kind of fended it off for about as long as you could. Tried to. And then this is just danger zone on 17. Oh, it was no good. There's so many things going on in the house right now. I think the All cats well. are about to brawl in the garage. If you need to go stop a brawl, feel free. I will continue to watch. I'll, I'll hold the fork down. It'll buff. <laughs> <laughs> it, it adds some more spiciness. Yeah, just a couple meows in the background, some screeches. It's all good the here. Dogs whining. Dogs will lose their mind. Bubbles, Bubbles is really protective over Jim, which is so funny. <laughs> nice. I remember that. Park job. And now you kind of have to get up and down. At least it feels like it in this moment. Yeah. I think I took a par or something. Did I make it? You, get, you know what, Kat? You did make it. You got the par. You're tied going into 18. Of course. You know how big that was? Huge. That was real, that was real big. I mean, also big for her to park the second shot for birdie. And now here we go. I mean, what are you thinking now? Do you know what the score is at this point? No. Yes. Wow. I was, oh, you did. I was, yeah, because I asked James. And I there's the door open. That. Yeah. Yeah. But guess what happens? Guess what happens? Yeah. The door shuts. <laughs> <laughs> what is that it first reaction? Down. You know, I was what, like, pissed. Do you remember what happened on the shot? Did you slip or was it just a spray? It was a spray. James helped out a lot with this shot because I was thinking about throwing a firebird. And he said, no, you need to throw your gator. And I said, but I don't like that. He's like, you need to throw your gator. And I was like, damn it. Mm -hmm. Okay, James. So I did. I threw the gator. And the middle is not a great spot to be either. I mean, you'd rather pick a side on this one. This is a good spot for you. I think this was lucky. Yeah. Yep. Just slid through the whole middle. Now you're wide out in the open. Yep. I knew at this moment, I was like, if she pars this, if we both par this, we're going to go into a playoff. As you can see, I'm holding the mm -hmm. towel going... <laughs> it's disintegrating in your hands. Yeah. I'm I was gonna thinking maybe... Out really quickly. Hey, you're all good. I'm so sick of you feral creatures. <laughs> get out of here. Come on, get. Jeez. Just in time for the final upshot. Perfection. Perfection. Proper. Proper. And now you're starting to prepare yourself for a, for a playoff. Were you thinking she was going to give this a long bid? Yes, because this is in Haley range. But it looked like... Playoff was inevitable. Everyone was feeling it. You saw people already starting to congregate down the fairway. How are you feeling? I was afraid I could miss this putt. I was like, just make it. Everyone's shouting and crap. I'm like, Ugh. everyone was way more excited than I was in this moment. I mean, you were easily getting the loudest cheers of anybody, rightfully so. But now people are like, oh, okay, it's real now. Oh, God. 
Talk about the walk to the tea pad. I knew that this was... This could be my moment. As you can see, the face. <laughs> and, um, Locked in. Yeah. I, I realized, I'm like... I looked in my mind, and I was like, I'm about to go up against Haley King, who's been playing really good for a long, long time. I just had to stay calm and not be stupid. This is a tough shot, too. It is, Whole man. Ten. I like that they could oh. And this is just a really bad spot. That short right side, she's just enough right where she almost has to go through it if she wants to get up and down. What were you thinking now? Were you like, okay, I can play it safe. I don't have to birdie. Or were you trying to still park it? I was trying to park it, but I was trying to read the wind. As you see, I went to the left side of the fairway uh, just in case that my disc, you know, did what it was going to, what I thought it was going to mm -hmm. do. I was very nervous. I wanted to puke in this moment. Really? Oh, yeah. Watching it makes me want to puke still. <laughs> are, are you feeling some emotions right now? Yeah, this is the first time I've ever, like, watched the round. I mean, you see it in both of your faces. Too good. It's right up there. No worries. And now she Veronica. has to just do something heroic. I mean, there's nothing, too. I mean, the biggest gap she has is two feet. It was this moment where I was like, oh, my God. It happened. I, I still remember. <laughs> I know. I know you did. And we, we're going to see that in a second. I just remember when you were first coming onto the scene, you did that commercial. You're like, guys, I'm not I'm not to be underestimated. And you you did it. You know, you came out here and you finally got the big win. And that's it. I mean, you put yourself in, in, in the public spotlight week in and week out, and, you know, all, all disc golfers here are so much chatter from the community, and then here you go. You're like, ha, I did it. <laughs> DN bought you flowers. She, she was banking on you winning. How are you feeling? I'm so happy. <laughs> what a celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea what I've sacrificed for that for this moment. I mean, even more than I've already seen, I can tell. What a week. My I mean, it takes a lot there. to. My mom took a, a second lot of your family job. was there. She took a second job to pay for all my tournaments when I didn't have a sponsor, and she drove me wherever I needed to go. She believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself. There's your niece. Oh my god, I love that little girl so much. <laughs> you had a lot of your family out there, huh? Oh yeah. Were they there the whole week, or were they there when, when you were on the final round lead card? Like, how much support were, did they give you that week? I think uh, Mike came out on the first day, and I don't remember the second day very much. Um, I think Eric came out with Caitlin, and then they came out the final day, my mom, Annabelle, and Annie LaBlue.
some of my bestest friends. Mm -hmm. You looked at me at Champions Cup, and you said something along the lines of, I'm going to get a big one soon. It was I forgot what hole it was, but you like got real close to me, and you were like, I'm getting a big one. You just watch. And then here you go. You delivered on your promise. You got another victory at the Cascade Challenge. What's, what's next for you? What's next for you in life, in disc golf? i just taking it day by day. <laughs> Um, I really, next is number one, mm -hmm. the best. These feral creatures, man. <laughs> well, Kat, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for rewatching that. It looks like for the first time with me, um, any final words for the people at home watching? Don't pick up dogs from the park. They are quite loud. <laughs> thank you so much, Kat. And folks, for those of you watching at home, thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you next time on The Winter Circle.